Hello, I'm Marianne Deveni. Well, most of the week, U.S. economic data has been blamed on the abnormally severe winter we've had. But is that completely true? And now we're getting data that will shed some light on those answers. I am joined today by James Marple, who is senior economist at TD Bank Group. Well, we've seen all this data and now we're getting new data out. Uh, let's start with, with housing, obviously one of the most weather related uh, areas ever. What do you think? Well, I think the weather did have an impact on construction earlier in the year, but actually what's happening in housing is uh, take, taking shape a little bit longer than that. That we've seen some weakness that really started about mid last year. So we can't blame mm -hmm. it all on the weather. Not totally anyway. No, and I think some of the weakness in housing has more to do with the adjustment in interest rates that we saw last year, okay. you know, the 100 basis point rise in in mortgage rates uh, and also some of the credit difficulties. Uh, we, we have had changes in mortgage rules that uh, happened at the beginning of this year that have made it, I think, a little bit difficult for would-be new home buyers to, to enter the market. Uh, so the housing market in the U.S. Is, is one of those areas where, yes, probably weather related, but we are seeing a little bit of weakness. Now, I do think that it, it, it should be a short-term story, and we will see that um, pick up in the months ahead. Uh, especially, we, we've really seen a surge of construction in, in the multifamily segment, uh, and that reflects, I think, some of the challenges uh, to home ownership. Um, but what we need to see is that kind of transition away from, from uh, multifamilies and towards single families, and in fact, that's what we saw a little bit of in, in the March uh, Housing Starts data that we, we had out this week, that we saw uh, it, it, it disappointed expectations, but it was really a decline in that multi-start uh, unit, and we saw singles actually uh, rebound uh, fairly substantially. So as long as that trend continues and we see, uh, as we've seen in mortgage applications, a continued increase, signs that you know people, there's tons of pent-up demand. I mean, the, the level of construction is just well under the pace of population growth and, and depreciation. So, so I think there's good reason to think that story plays out. But was faced by a setback that was a little bit more permanent than, than just the weather, and I think we are seeing early signs that it's transitioning out of it. Now, I was reading uh, one of uh, your articles, and it, it was there was um, a 60%, is it uh, pent up demand in, in, in housing versus historical, I guess? Yeah, well, just looking at the level of construction, I mean, they, they're bouncing sort of around 900,000 mm -hmm. starts. Um, you know, historically, uh, housing sorts of ran about one and a half million, but you, so, you know, that's about that. 60% below, but even that, it, it's supported really by growth in the adult population uh, and, and of course the depreciation. So yeah, we have a long way to go. I, I, I like to say we're at the early stages uh, of the housing recovery. We've seen it take uh, place in, in home prices, which have bounced back about 25% from their from their trough, um, but really that has to transition into an increase in construction activity and that will show up more in, in jobs and in economic mm -hmm. activity more broadly. And that leads to my next question though. So we, we see jobs and obviously if you can't get to your workplace, that's going to affect your job. Uh, but does it, a lot of people work indoors, so does it really make that much of a difference? Well, I think that in terms of the weather, the weather impact was in, in part on, on consumption behavior. We saw spending fall. Uh, you did see some manufacturing uh, related uh, shutdowns or at least you saw many manufacturing activity decline in, in this, uh, no advance in December than it actually declined uh, in January um, and then bounced back really strongly in February and, and, and good growth in March. So that's that real good sign that, that we are, that it was a, a you know, temporary thing, a, a weather related impact and, and that as people, as you said, could get to their jobs that we are seeing activity bounce back. And obviously weather isn't across all of the U.S. It, it was mostly sort of Northeast and maybe the, mid, the Midwest kind of was, was getting hit the hardest, yeah. I believe. Um, so it was that still that big of an impact, you think? Well, I think it was, I mean, substantial. So, but again, you, you kind of want to look at both the yeah. first quarter and then and then the bounce back. And the, uh, if we look at growth in the first quarter, probably subtracted about one and a half percentage points from, from real uh, economic activity in Q1, okay. um, but should add that back in the second quarter. So mm -hmm. so now we're just, we, we really, I mean, you know, we, we'll stop talking about the weather when yeah. we actually <laughs> see, uh, when we see the, 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 the bounce back. But I, I think, you know, we're just looking at kind of our projections for for the early part of the year. We think we'll see growth maybe 1% in Q1. Um, that should rebound to about 4% in Q2. Um, and I think there's every reason to think it will. You know, auto sales in March were, were at their highest level in seven years. Uh, the retail sales numbers have been really good coming into the quarter. So everything uh, points to that story, but we're just, we're, as you said, we're just getting the data on it now and we're just, we're just hoping it continues to, to show that story. 
And uh, obviously prices are, are a big impact on, on whether people spend or not, and we've got some data on that. Uh, how much would that be affected by, by the weather? A little bit by the weather, but yeah. actually the weather in, in, in a different way that mm -hmm. uh, we saw a big increase in food prices uh, in, in March, and that had to do with drought uh, in California. Um, that, that really has uh, led to you know, an increase in, in, in all sorts of uh, fresh mm -hmm. fruit and, and even mm -hmm. in livestock prices. Also, some I think the geopolitical tensions have raised uh, commodity prices, especially uh, food prices. So that really showed up in, in, in inflation in March. Um, the other thing that was was a bit surprising, well, not surprising, but something that that increased a little more than expected was uh, was was housing costs. We saw um, what they call owner's equivalent rent, which is basically what people think they that they could rent their homes at if they were renting uh, increase, and and that I think actually reflects, as I said, this pent up demand in the housing market that we've seen um, as you know construction really fell to nothing. That that has led to uh, demand outpacing supply, and we've seen vacancy rates in housing really drop. Quite Quite dramatically, uh, and that's put a lot of upward pressure on rents. Um, it's been met with a, a return in, in, as I said, that construction in the multifamily space, um, but we need to see it, it extend out to the single family, and I think that will uh, that will lead to less uh, inflationary pressure on uh, on the housing market. But again, um, that's probably going to be something that maintains a little bit of upward pressure on inflation at least over the next uh, several months. Uh, I think that's really important because for the Fed, you know, they're they're looking at inflation that's way under their target, but you know, they don't care so much about what it is today about what the trajectory is uh, over the next you know 18 months and you kind of have a bit of dueling uh, dueling impacts where we see that some some of the temporary uh, issues in inflation in terms of uh, health care costs look like they're actually uh, were temporary and will start to adding to inflation on the other hand um, some of the housing uh, costs I think will diminish as we see the supply come back so um, what happens there how that all plays out and also of course as the as the labor market recovers we see less slack uh, in the labor market that should start to put some upward pressure on inflation um, but really how fast we get there I think will determine how quickly uh, the Fed um, is in, in eventually you know pulling back their stimulus. Now are we uh, seeing anything in terms of manufacturing and, and businesses being affected obviously they would be affected to some extent but has it play out in the economic numbers? In terms of uh, manufacturing, in terms of, in, industrial production, right? So mm -hmm. um, the industrial production data came out again, uh, came out today, and that, that was a you know a real bounce back relative to what we had seen um, earlier uh, in the year, and I think again reflecting that supply chains that were disrupted are, are coming back uh, to normal. But just kind of mm -hmm. to segue back to the, the inflation uh, issue, there is some businesses talking a little bit more now about having an inability to to find skilled labor, um, uh, and and that's some thing where you know you are seeing some signs um, that maybe the labor market is tightening up starting to put that upward pressure on inflation and I I really think it's something that that investors should should pay attention to because um, you know this this is something that is if mm -hmm. it one way or the other if it goes faster than expected um, it could influence you know when the uh, when interest rates rise and, and that'll that'll affect the whole the financial market more yeah broadly. that's usually pretty significant because it takes a lot to move the 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 jobs numbers usually and, and move uh, actual prices of of jobs higher. Yeah, well, wage I mean, it's, growth, it's, yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's been a long time of very, very mm -hmm. low wage growth mm -hmm. um, the last mm -hmm. several years, but early signs that it's starting to pick up and, and I think a good leading indicator for uh, future inflation. Now, what about generally uh, the economic outlook? So it looks like it's getting rosier than it was at least. And what does that mean for Canada? Well, for, for Canada, we're really relying on this story of the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, picking up. Because we're pushed so much by it. Right. And, and the Bank of Canada uh, put out their monetary policy report today, kind of their expectations uh, for the Canadian economy. It's very similar to our own view. Um, but in both cases, we expect to see a big pickup in, in net exports and the contribution to growth uh, from net exports. In fact, over the next year, it's about a quarter of the uh, economic growth expected in Canada, um, you know, the, from both the Bank of Canada and ourselves. So we really need to see that, and the lower Canadian dollar should should help. And the Bank of Canada talked a little bit about how um, businesses are affected by the lower Canadian dollar, and on net, mm -hmm. um, you know, especially given uh, our uh, our rel still relatively large export sector and, and reliance on the U.S., that it is should be a positive for their sales outlook. Um, but we really need to see that start playing out. So you know, the 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 Goldilocks scenario is we see the U.S. 
um, pick up uh, to sort of the 3% that, that we think they will, which is, you know, it's a, a whole hundred basis points above where they were last year. Uh, that allows uh, Canadian exports to really drive forward growth here and, and eat up the remaining slack in the Canadian economy because, of course, on the domestic side of things now, we're seeing our housing market really slow and, and likely at least subtract from growth as we move our construction sector back towards, uh, towards our long-run demographic fundamentals. All right. Well, thank you very much, James. You're welcome. I've been joined by James Marple, Senior Economist at TD Bank Group. Thanks for watching.